Good day, it's Mark, and welcome back to the channel. And today we've got something a little bit different. Uh, Chrysler, Mopar, well known across uh, the USA and Australia as well. In Australia, we've uh, had some very iconic Mopars that we've uh, engineered and built here in Australia, in the uh, the factories in South Australia, Lonsdale uh, for the engines and Tonsley Park. But this is uh, an episode about some very unusual and interesting uh, Chryslers that I came across recently. I purchased a, uh, a brochure for uh, JDM market, Japanese domestic market, uh, Chrysler Australian products that were actually sold in Japan. So uh, let's check those out. So this is quite a large format brochure, and the first thing that strikes you is it's not a, a format uh, or a design that was offered in Australia, and it's just titled Chrysler, Chrysler 318 four-door sedan, Chrysler Charger 770 two-door coupe. As you go through it, there's a whole lot of Japanese uh, writing, which, <laughs> I mean, I could use Google Translator, I guess. If you want to freeze frame, you uh, might want to do that yourself. But uh, the first model it covers is the uh, Chrysler by Chrysler. Uh, and they, it's a 318, which is interesting because in Australia, the uh, Chrysler by Chrysler, CH and CJs were available with a 265 Hemi six cylinder or a 360 5.9 litre V8. There was no 318. Um, in the CK, which was the last of the Chrysler by Chrysler's, I think, uh, 1976. Uh, I understand that a 318 was made available in that model, at least in my glasses guide, my dealer guide I've got from that era. It does list 265, a 360, and also a 318. So it's interesting that the Japanese spec car, this is around 1974, uh, has the 318 in it. They probably thought, you know, with the price of fuel and running costs, that, you know, 360 was probably a bit over the top and uh, having owned a Chrysler by Chrysler, uh, check out my episode uh, on that from uh, a few years ago. I owned one of those back in the 80s. Um, that drank like a fish. Um, so a 318 is you know, deemed to be more economical. And there's a nice silver car that's depicted here uh, with the Japanese businessman in the back with his pipe, uh, giving the impression that he's being chauffeured around in it. And when you look at the car, there's some quite unique elements uh, on the Japanese market JDM spec vehicle to compared to the Australian domestic market. So apart from the 318 engine, which I mentioned earlier, you've also got these uh, Japanese uh, side view mirrors uh, on the front fenders, which was something that all the Japanese cars had back in Back in the day, and anything that was sold in Japan was required to have that as well. So this Chrysler by Chrysler has that feature. It also has uh, front side marker lights that were not fitted to the Australian uh, local market vehicles. That was also a requirement, obviously, for the Japanese market as well. In terms of interior trim, it's the brocade, the Chrysler brocade, which is really nice, quite hard wearing and I thought it looked really, really good. Power windows uh, stand in the car, of course. In the brochure, they depict this really beautiful uh, black example. Uh, very rare to see a black Chrysler by Chrysler in Australia. I remember I was in Epping or Eastwood once, and I was waiting at the traffic lights, and uh, as a pedestrian, and one drove past a black, immaculate black car, which was a mourning car from a funeral director's. And I thought, wow, that looks really terrific in that colour. So it's good to see this car uh, featured in black. And this all this photography is unique to this Japanese market brochure, which was sold through Chrysler and Mitsubishi uh, dealers in Japan. But again, you can see the, even though it's got the side view mirror as per the Australian market car on the door, it's also then got those uh, mirrors on the front fenders as well. You can also see the little repeater lights on the front guard which was something we also had which had the indicators in there and then you've got these rather bulbous uh, side marker lights as well at the back again there's some unique elements to the car compared to the australian market you've got these round uh, reflectors in the lower panel below the rear bumper bar and you've also got uh, 
a um, white or a clear reversing light as well. I think in the Australian market car, uh, you only had the amber indicators which would uh, go on when you put the car in reverse. You didn't actually have white reversing lights on the Australian market cars. Then you go to the pages on the interiors. Um, this looks fairly standard spec or similar to the Australian market cars. You've got that, uh, it's sort of integrated air conditioning, but it's under dash, but that was the factory air in the Chryslers that we got in Australia. Uh, these cars also had some pretty good gauges, which was typical of Chryslers back in the day. You know, temperature gauge, fuel gauge, um, which was famous for bouncing all over the place. Uh, and also amps uh, gauges as well. Uh, power windows, also power seats. I think it was just the driver's seat that was electric. The passenger seat wasn't electric. And then this really cool uh, signal-seeking radio uh, cassette that I believe was a Mitsubishi electric uh, item. And that was also the same as what was available as an option on the Australian uh, market cars as well. Then the brochure moves into the Chrysler Charger 770. Uh, there's a nice, it uh, looks like a green metallic uh, car here. It has the styled steel wheels on it, this particular one. It's got the sort of Japanese female model uh, sitting in the front uh, left hand. Uh, passenger seat, not the driver's seat, and uh, but pretty cool uh, imagery there. The car looks particularly smart, I think. Then there's this uh, terrific uh, rear three-quarter view, this glamour shot of the car. Uh, as I mentioned before, this is a 770 spec, so you can see that on the, the badging on the rear, Charger 770 with the red, white, and blue. You've got the padded area, uh, just before the C-pillar there um, in the car, or maybe it's called a B. I think it's a C-pillar still, even though it's only got a, an A and a B-pillar, or it's an A and a C-pillar. I think it's an A and a C-pillar. Uh, you've also got, uh, as I said, the styled steel wheels here. You've got that reflector uh, side marker light on the front fender, uh, which was unique to the Japanese market cars, and you've got the fender-mounted uh, mirrors as well. And then if you move to the rear, you can see the rear uh, reflectors and then you've got the clear reversing lights. Again, those two elements in particular were not on the Australian market cars. The um, Australian market cars used the amber um, indicators as the um, reversing lights. One thing these chargers were renowned for were really nice interiors. They had the high back uh, bucket seats the center console. The Japanese market cars also have air conditioning, and I guess when you think of the climate in Japan, that makes a lot of sense. You've got the beautiful machined uh, dash face and also machined metal finish on the console as well. And then another thing which is really interesting is this clock, which was fitted uh, on the console, this sort of rectangular clock. That was uh, unique to the Japanese market. Uh, model as well that was not available in Australia uh, so that was a nice little feature I thought then you've got this very unique uh, shot here to the front three-quarter image of the car with a Chrysler by Chrysler center grill piece which was unique to this export vehicle and then you've got the four round headlights so we only had uh, would have had the Valiant type grill uh, with single headlights um, in the Australian vehicle. So that was um, something, again, that was quite unique to the uh, the Japanese market uh, offering. And here's just a, an image of a, uh, a uh, VJ uh, Charger, just to give you a comparison of that front-end design of the cars that we got versus uh, what was uh, on the Japanese vehicle. And similarly, uh, this is the back of the Australian market charger versus what uh, the Japanese market one was. So you can see though that we didn't get those lower reflectors or the clear reversing lights. As I mentioned, uh, instrumentation on the Chryslers was pretty comprehensive. Fuel gauge, temperature gauge, amps gauge. Also at the 770, you got the TACO as well there. Uh, and uh, the speedometer, which is... Um, uh, in kilometres per hour uh, and 
the clock, which uh, again was unique to the uh, the Japanese market vehicle. So that's just a close up there of the clock. Also in the brochure, then you go to sort of the range of colors that were uh, made available. Uh, yeah, pretty cool actually, uh, when you um, look at it. I don't know, some of these colors look a little bit odd. There's one here that looks almost like a very pale pink. Uh, I'm sure that was not available as a color. That would have been just a st standard Australian colors, I'm sure. I don't think there was anything unique for for the Japanese market cars. Although it's interesting that it looks to be what a silver, a green. I it shows as light pink. I think that's a white, um, a blue, uh, and then a black. So a fairly restricted uh, range of colors, and it makes sense because you know, there would have only been a fairly small number of these sold in Japan, maybe a couple of hundred, something like that. And they cover off a bit of detail around the uh, the front disc brakes, ventilated disc brakes, uh, and then the 5.2 litre V8 engine, uh, just showing a sort of an X-ray view of that engine. You know, a good, reliable engine, the Fireball V8, um, but yeah, clearly not a 265 or not a 360 in terms of available engines, in these export cars are all just uh, sold with a 318 V8. I think that would have been a fairly expensive car in Japan as well. And then there's just a summary of the detailed specifications, all in Japanese, I'm not going to try and read it, but it's also got the dimensions of the vehicles there as well. That would have been fairly large cars, I think, uh, for the Japanese market, certainly the Chrysler by Chrysler, you know, it was a decent sized cars, but even the Charger, you know, the width of the car was quite wide compared to a lot of the Japanese market vehicles. And then you can see here on the back of the brochure, Chrysler Australia and the Mitsubishi logo as well. So uh, there you have it. That's a uh, Chrysler Australia, you know, Mitsubishi shared JDM uh, export brochure, something you, you just don't see every day. In fact, you know, I've so this is the first one I've ever seen um, in the many years I've been collecting brochures. So yeah, it's great to be able to pick it up and share it with you guys. Well, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Please make sure you do hit that uh, that subscribe uh, button and uh, hit the like button as well uh, for more old car content. We've got our uh, Australian history videos. Uh, we're on the Fairlane series at the moment. There'll also be a Commodore series and a Valiant series coming up soon as well. So make sure you're subscribed so you can follow along with those. And, um, yeah, the JDM uh, Chrysler Australia products, pretty interesting. Uh, unique specifications. I'm not too sure how many survive these days. Probably not too many at all. Uh, something quite rare. And uh, to come across that brochure, I had my eye out for it because I had uh, seen some images online. And so I was keeping an eye out. And then one luckily came up for sale. It cost me an arm and three legs. Uh, but luckily I know a centipede. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.